Hi, my name is Nicole and I am a student at the University of Wisconsin La Crosse. My major areas of study are biology and education. Basically, I'm interested in teaching middle school or high school science as a career. Sean Mobley is also a student at UW La Crosse. Together, we are making a film about identifying and classifying prairie plants where we live. But first, let's find out a bit about where we live and why prairie plants are important. La Crosse, Wisconsin is located in southwestern Wisconsin. La Crosse is in an area of Wisconsin called the Driftless Region. Because the glaciers didn't pass over this area during the last ice age, the land consists of great bluffs and valleys locally called coolies. La Crosse sits on a bed of sand and generally has sandy soils. This sand, deposited by the mighty Mississippi River over many, many years, is the result of melting glaciers. Today, La Crosse supports a variety of ecosystems, including forests, wetlands, and grasslands. The specific ecosystem we're going to focus on is the prairie. Prairies are a type of grassland ecosystem that once covered the United States from Texas to Canada and from the Appalachian Mountains in the east to the Rocky Mountains in the west. Because they looked like waves in the sea, prairies were often called seas of grass. In the 1800s, pioneers could easily lose their way among the tall prairie grasses that could reach heights of more than six feet tall. Could you imagine traveling in a wagon or on horseback through a tunnel of grass? Today, less than one one hundredth percent of the vast expanses of original native prairies remain. The remnants are isolated by plowed farmlands for crops, pastures for livestock like cattle, or towns and cities that have developed over the years. Prairie ecosystems are rare. That means that some native plants and animals that call the prairie home are also rare. In fact, Large animals, such as buffaloes, burrowing animals, such as prairie dogs, ground nesting animals, such as prairie chickens, and pollinating animals, such as butterflies and other insects, have declined in numbers. Many people are working to save the prairies and native species that grow in them so that they do not disappear. Local agencies, like the Prairie Enthusiasts and Mississippi Valley Conservancy, purchase lands to preserve prairies and their inhabitants. Some people even donate their lands so that they are preserved. Here in La Crosse, prairie plants are found in many places. Some of the places are wild. Some have been saved by people. The United States Geological Survey on French Island, which is close to La Crosse, has a sand prairie that is available for educational purposes. This seven acre prairie is restored, meaning that it was planted on this site. Government agencies and local groups like the prairie enthusiasts manage these protected prairies so they remain intact. As students, you can learn about prairies by better understanding the kinds of animals, plants, and other organisms that live in prairies. To do this, you must first know how to identify these organisms. Just like field biologists, you can identify a specific plant by looking at its external and internal parts. Identifying plants requires close attention to detail and knowledge of the structures of plants. The best time to identify plants during the school year is in the fall before leaves are shed or in the spring after the plants start leafing out and flowering. Identification is easiest when leaves, stems, flowers, and possibly fruits are present. First, let's review the three main organs of a plant. There are the roots, the stems, and the leaves. Pay close attention to these organs when attempting to identify a plant. Begin identifying by looking at the leaves. Leaves are categorized as being simple or compound. Simple leaves, like that of an oak, have blades that are one continuous piece. Compound leaves have multiple leaflets. An example of a compound leaf type may be found on the lead plant. The next step is to figure out how the leaves are attached to the plant stem. This is called leaf attachment. Leaf attachment may be opposite, alternate, or whirled. Opposite leaf attachment consists of leaves attached to the stem opposite of each other. Alternate leaf attachment consists of leaves alternately placed on each side of the stem. Whirled leaves are attached around the stem. If you're lucky enough to be in the field while the plant is flowering, the flower may be used to identify the plant too. Look at the color and shape of the flower. Is the flower singular or clustered with many other flowers? Now that you know what to look for, let's discuss plant identification books. You're not expected to know or memorize every plant in the prairie. There are many great resources you can use to ID plants. You could work with someone who knows the plants, like a local expert. You could also use an identification book like a field guide. Look for a book with plants that grow in your state. 
When you are identifying plants, remember that some plants found in prairies are endangered. You must not pick endangered plants when in the field. In fact, in Wisconsin, it is against the law to pick or remove any natural thing from a state park or natural area. Be wise and use your eyes. Don't pick or remove anything when you're in the field without permission. Better yet, take a picture like we have done and share your plant pictures with your classmates. Plants can be identified by using a common name. Common names are names like lead plant. That's the plant that is seen here. Plants are also grouped into families. Family names are used by scientists and are given to plants that have many similarities. Lead plant is in the pea family, called Fabiaceae. Also in the pea family is purple prairie clover. Both of these plants are found in prairies in Wisconsin. Now that you know what to look for to identify plants, let's apply it to how biologists group living things. Classification is the way scientists group organisms based on how closely they are related to one another. With plants, scientists look at the parts of a plant just as we did for identifying them. However, for classification, they focus on the similarities and differences among different plant species. Classifying living things, plants included, requires a system which scientists from all over the world can use. Because languages vary, scientists need a way to clearly communicate with one another. They use the same classification system and the same naming system around the globe. Spiderwort is a plant classified in the Camelinaceae family. The scientific name contains two words. The first word is always capitalized, just like when you write your own first name. The second word, though, is always written in lowercase. Here is an example of a scientific name. All plants are in the kingdom plantae. As you classify a plant from kingdom to species, fewer and fewer remain at each level. For example, all spiderworts are plants, but not all plants are spiderworts. It is a challenge to classify plants all the way to species level, even for scientists. But by practicing, you will become more familiar with the methods and language that scientists use. Now you know a little bit about prairies and their significant decline over the last hundred years. You know that many living organisms live at the prairie. Challenge yourself to identify and classify plants at the prairie. You'll find the open sky and waves of plants to be even more important now that you know about prairies throughout the country.